everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and welcome to the recap of the August 2021 Chemnitz Dialogue livestream. We were inspired by this soft photo of an open book with some scattered dried leaves on top, and I wanted to create a really subtle, neutral colorway. So I dyed up this bare stroll fingering weight yarn using three different kinds of speckles that I made from mixing different pre-mixed colors. This finished color white is so subtle and fun. I'm really proud of it. And honestly, I want to dye some more. So I'm going to do something a little different in this recap. And while I go set this aside to wash it, we are going to set up to dye another version of this colorway. This time I am dyeing the yarn using four pre-soaked skeins of Knit Picks Swish DK yarn. This yarn is 100% Superwash Merino. And one of the reasons why I wanted to film this again is that I think that the speckles are so subtle that it is a little hard, I think, even to see on camera here, but it could have also been hard to see with the webcam. And so I thought it would be fun to show it. Now, I have not yet done a pre-filmed Dye Pot Weekly episode where I have speckled onto twisted skeins like this, but I really like having the twisted skeins in the pan. Not only can I fit more yarn in the pan, but this technique helps me uh, get more balance. It helps me space out heavier patches of speckles on the yarn where after just a couple flips, I'm feeling like it's very well balanced and I'm very, very happy with the final color. The one note is that the green I mixed is extraordinarily subtle. And I think it's something that we will probably only see and find when we go and zoom in on the finished yarn in the end. Looking at the yarn, I can make it out, but because I mix that green with brown, it is toned down. But I think that that works for our inspiration photo. When I finished the yarn dyeing, I removed the yarn to let it cool completely. So then we can use our warm dye bath to turn our attention to the yarn mop I started during the stream, and I may also have one extra skein of yarn that we can dye with any leftover dye powder. All right, I just removed the DK yarn, and I have one skein of stroll that I snagged a little bit, so I'll need to restain it. And then I have our yarn mop, which is cool and newspapery. Um, and with the little patches of like the orangey brown, it almost feels burnt. But I do want to pump up the volume on this and here. And so what I'm going to do is put my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves back on and speed things up to add the remaining dye onto this yarn. I'm not going to go as fast as just dumping the dye. I'm still going to sort of speckle all over, but I'm not going to wait very long to flip and add color to the other side. Sometimes I save this dye like this and use it in another video, but I figured let's use this up and see where we end up. But when I started, I was feeling almost some newspaper vibes. I focused any touching and liquids on the skein that was the yarn mop already and tried to focus speckling all over on this skein right here. I really like this heavy speckled look that we have, but I know that the actual level of speckles on the finished yarn might not be quite as heavy as this. Uh, so I do want to keep that in mind. but. One of these days, I will layer color and get all over super, super heavy speckles, uh, and that would be really fun. The key here is that while I'm speckling, rather than adding large amounts of powder, which would give us more of a splotch, I am going around and letting the color fall and set. So I'm going up the length and back down, and that gives more of these specks all over. Anyway, I'm going to heat this now for 20 minutes. Then once it cools off, I will wash everything off camera. And now let's go look at the finished dry yarn. Editing Rebecca here for one quick little thing. Uh, there are still some more 2021 Chemnitz Hanukkah samplers available in my Etsy shop. These contain multiple wrapped packages 
so you can unwrap a new hand-dyed mini skein of yarn each night of Hanukkah while watching a new Chemnitz yarn dyeing video. The whole thing is so much fun. And I just restocked a few more of some of the full-size bonus skeins that you can add to your samplers. Now, if you've already purchased a sampler, feel free to grab an add-on skein, but you do need to have purchased a sampler in order to get these. So if you're interested in one, I would pause this video and head over to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop right now to check them out. Thank you so much, and now let's get back to the recap. Here is the finished dry yarn from the August 2021 Chemnitz Dialong livestream, where we were inspired by a book and other reading type accessories. And I really wanted to play with layering speckles and multicolored speckles, and this was so much fun. For our main colorway, you pretty much see the black and orange speckles the most. Uh, there are some really, really subtle green speckles in here. You can see some of them like over here, but because of the way the premixed colors are, the greens don't end up popping as much as the blacks and more orange tones do. Also, I had fun creating my own pre-mixed mixtures of color. I think that mixing the brown and the orange together really did help give us those deeper orange speckles. Not because each speckle is a mix of the two, but having that other dye in there helped dilute uh, the orange a bit. And in some cases, maybe it did sort of blend a little bit when sort of both different dye pigments stick to the citric acid. But I believe I did start with a more burnt orange uh, to begin with, so, you know, that just happened. But it just does feel extremely bookish to me, and I am really excited about that. I've done other neutral feeling colorways before that were like gray or tan, but this truly feels like neutral, and I think that it would work really nicely with a lot of other yarn bases or just on its own. I think it's really pretty. The technique for using twisted skeins to apply the speckles worked so well to distribute it in a way that felt well distributed around the skein. And while I did flip and maybe did like four different stages of speckling, I didn't do like six or seven and keep feeling like I needed more and more and more. I feel like I'm finally getting better at getting what feels like reasonable coverage, but still not being so heavy that you have like no blank space yet left. And so I'm very excited with how this has turned out. It tends to be a little easier to get uh, coverage on DK yarn just because while there is as much fiber present, there is less surface area. So it can be a little easier to get the dye distributed onto the fiber. There is this like rogue blue spot on one of the skeins, probably because it was from one of the, one of the greens. Uh, sometimes something like that happens. And that's one of the uh, downsides of speckling with premixed colors is that you don't always know what you're gonna get. Part of me does wish that I had mixed the green a little bit stronger, but at the same time, I'm not mad. I like the softness that we have here. And I'm afraid that if there was too much green, I may have overdone it. <laughs> Finally, we have our two yarn mops slash leave no dye behind. One that I used to wipe my hands on while I was dyeing. And here we have more splotches of color in addition to the heavy speckles I layered all over. And while I was dyeing this with the speckles, I did let myself make this one more splotchy while trying to keep the speckles sharper over here. We did let the color spread and we did flip the yarn really, really quickly. And this gave us just this really wonderful heavy speckled look. I feel like this is what I end up getting a lot more often uh, versus going for something much more subtle. So I'm really happy that I basically did both. 
I think that achieving this heavier speckled look, which we do have this pastel, um, gosh, it's sort of like a grayish. Uh, we have this pastel base, uh, which happens because happened because I was speckling and then not waiting very long before moving the yarn. Uh, and that is something that is just also a lot of fun. <laughs> now it's time for my favorite part of the Chemnitz Dialogue Recaps, where I share all of the yarn that you dyed inspired by the same inspiration photo. Did you go for more subtle, uh, neutral colored speckles like I did or were you more inspired by the rich brown orange and green in the photo as well and go a little bit bigger on some of the colors you see there there are so many different ways that people can interpret what they see from one photograph and I think that it is so fun to see how similar and different the different colorways people create are if you would like to be featured in a future Chemnitz Dialogue recap, just share your yarn that you dyed inspired by the inspiration photo on Instagram using the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue or reply to the inspiration photo on the Chemnitz Facebook page with your photo. Thank you so much to everyone who participated. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and please make sure that you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel so you never miss a new video. I try to schedule the dialogue live streams a little bit in advance. At least when I release the photo, I try to have the time and date of the next live stream ready to go. Uh, but sometimes my live streams can be pretty last minute. So turning on your notifications and smashing that bell uh, can help you be notified. You can get a notification from YouTube when, and so that way you will never miss a new live stream. Thank you so much for watching.